Hello, everyone, and either welcome or welcome back to the Gender Libertarian Podcast. If you do like this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, and on my Patreon page. So you already know, as much time as I've spent over the years discussing social media and social media censorship and Section 230 and people making alternatives to Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you know there was no way that I was not going to comment on this particular situation. And that is obviously, as you can tell by the title of this episode, the parlor situation, which let me explain just in case you came in on this late or you don't spend a lot of time on Twitter or just kind of don't know what the hell's going on here. Um, Parler is not exactly like a new platform. They were launched in 2018. So it's been out there for a couple of years. I've known about it for about a year-ish. But over the past couple of weeks, there's been this huge push from various conservatives, including sitting members of Congress. You got guys like Rand Paul and his wife. Um, a couple other people did it. A um, couple other conservative, like big, like blue check conservatives, all started this huge push for all of the conservatives to get off of Twitter because of the censorship, which I'm sure you could probably hear my eye roll on that one. But because Twitter is just so, so mean to all of the nice conservatives that everybody should get off Twitter and go over to Parler. Now, I've said this a couple times on Twitter, and I'm going to go ahead and say it here. I am side-eyeing the ever-loving hell out of that whole situation because this whole thing doesn't feel entirely organic to me. Like, I'm just, I'm sorry. Like I said, they launched in 2018. It's 2020. And all of a sudden, we've got this massive push by big-name conservatives all of the sudden to just go over to Parlor. I'm calling shenanigans. Like, there's some shit going on behind the scenes here. There's This is being incentivized in some way because, obviously, I mean, if there was an organic push for conservatives to leave Twitter and go somewhere, like, Gab has been sitting right over there for how many years? And... They're a free speech platform, and actually, I don't even have to put air quotes around that. Gab will pretty much let you say whatever the hell it is you want to say, and there have been very few people who have ever been kicked off Gab, but it has happened. But like I said, you can count the number of people on one hand who have been kicked off Gab, but I don't remember seeing any coordinated effort from conservatives and of sitting members of Congress to get everybody to go over to Gab. Gee, I wonder why, but... Yeah, something about this is just a little hinky to me anyway. So, have this big push, and a bunch of people did open up Parler accounts. I don't think Parler has released any kind of information on numbers. At least if they have, I haven't seen it. But I know a lot of people, like, from people who just wanted to go see what was going on over on Parler, people who were actually committed to the idea of having conservatives leave Twitter and go over to Parler and build an audience over there, People who just wanted to go troll all the conservatives that were moving over to Parler because, I mean, that's what happens, people. Welcome to social media. So we had this big influx of people all of a sudden going to Parler. And then, once everybody signed up, people started reading the terms of service. And yeah, that's kind of where things have gone a bit sideways in the Parler story. So... Let me go ahead and start with a statement that the CEO released on Parler, which, funnily enough, <laughs> this statement actually violates the community standards for Parler <laughs> due to content. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second, but this was his kind of TLDR version of trying to explain the contents of the TOS, although this statement does leave out the most egregious part of the TOS. I will discuss that, but let me go ahead and read to you his statement. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me jump a little bit ahead in the story. Um, people started getting kicked off of Parler, which in theory, as Parler presented itself as this free speech platform where all speech is welcome and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, all of a sudden people started getting kicked off Parler. And I don't mean just like trolls. I mean people... Who were not trolling? I mean, Thor Benson got kicked off. And Thor Benson's not a troll. Like, 
whatever you may happen to think of him, he is a blue check conservative with a huge audience. It's not like he was there like shit posting or anything. So here's the statement. To the people complaining on Twitter about being banned on Parler, please pay heed. Here are the very few basic rules we need you to follow on Parler. If these are not to your liking, we apologize, but we will enforce. When you disagree with someone, posting pictures of your fecal matter in the comment section will not be tolerated. <laughs> Guys, literal shit posting is not allowed on Parler. Be on notice. <laughs> I want to know who did that. Who did that? Like, who committed to actually posting a picture of shit in somebody's comment? That person deserves an award. I've never even seen anybody on Twitter do that. Like, I want names. Who did that? Anyway, moving back to the statement. Your username cannot be obscene like cum dumpster. <laughs> but, by the way, you can't put anything sexual on Parlor. period. But if your username happens to involve things that directly invoke the Third Reich or Nazism or Hitler or anything along those lines, those are okay. Like, there's plenty of people on Parlor who have usernames that are a hell of a lot more sketchy than cum dumpster. And I probably should have put a language warning before I started this, but... You're here. It's me. You already know I don't edit for language. So <laughs> moving on. No pornography. Doesn't matter who, what, where, when, or in what realm. Okay. The TOS is pretty clear about the fact that Parlor does not allow lewd. And that is the word they use. That's not the word I'm using, which is it's I point that out because lewd can be rather broad and is very subjective, but they do not allow lewd imagery or lewd language. So not only can you not post pornography or anything of a sexual nature, you also cannot use any kind of written descriptions of anything that are of a sexual nature on the free speech platform. Moving on. We will not allow you to spam other people trying to speak with unrelated comments like fuck you in every comment. It's stupid, it's pointless, grow up. Yeah, it is stupid and it is pointless, but this is supposed to be the free speech platform. And yeah, so if you post up something like that, you can face consequences that I will discuss when we get back to discussing the rest of the TOS. But the last point, you cannot threaten to kill anyone in the comment section. Sorry, never ever going to be okay. Okay. That one I can understand, and that is the one on this list that will actually get you kicked off Twitter, too. Like, if somebody makes a death threat and it gets reported, you will either get temporarily banned, permanently banned, whatever. But the funniest thing about this whole list is all of the rest of this on this list is activities that are allowed on Twitter. But they're not allowed on the free speech platform. But they are allowed... On the bad, awful, no good censorship platform. Do you see the irony here? <laughs> it's funny. I'm sorry, guys. It's just, it's really funny. So anyway, moving back to the rest of the TOS. And like I said, the most egregious, actually quite frightening part of the TOS. On the topic of penalties that you could face for violating the TOS or maybe not even violating the TOS. Because who the hell knows here? Um, Parler can terminate your account for any reason at any time. They do not have to give you a warning. They don't have to show that you did a TOS violation. They can just wake up and be like, you know what? That person, not allowed here anymore. Bye. Again, this is supposed to be the open, inclusive, free speech platform, but has a clause in the TOS that goes further than Twitter does. I mean, Twitter will obviously kick you off of the site, but they have to provide cause. Parler doesn't. Per their own TOS, they could just be like, fuck you, bye. So that's that's a little draconian, but here's the part that is most concerning and really the part that if you are going to be on Parler, you need to understand this. You, you need to understand that you do have some legal liability on Parler for what you say. Like I said, on the free speech platform. This is in the TOS. If Parler is sued for something that you said 
on Parlor. Parlor will expect you to pay their legal fees. Now, let me try to explain this to you in kind of a different way. And I know I've talked on this on the pod before about slap lawsuits. And if you've missed it, here's short brief summation. A slap lawsuit is a lawsuit that you file against somebody, not because you think that there's really any kind of decent merit to the lawsuit, but because you're trying to keep somebody from doing something or not doing something by burying them in legal fees or tying them up in the legal court system. It's designed not to be like an actual lawsuit. It's meant to disincentivize somebody from doing something that the plaintiff does not want them to do. And so you're making it either financially impossible or legally impossible because you're being tied up in the courts for doing that. There are a few states in the U.S. that have banned slap lawsuits, but the vast majority of states have not. So here's where I I told you all that to tell you this. Usually, like when you're talking about a slap lawsuit and you're talking about legal fees, typically one of two things you try to have happen. Either you try to work out an agreement or you try to get the judge to rule that the plaintiff is responsible for the defendant's legal fees because they are the ones that brought the stupid, dumb lawsuit. So obviously, in all fairness, that should be the person who should be responsible for paying the defendant's legal fees because, I mean, that's just fair. Like, if you bring a frivolous lawsuit against somebody, then you should be on the hook for paying that person's legal fees when it is found to be ruled against you. Like, that's fair. That's what normally happens. What Parler is saying here is that if they are in such a situation where they have to be a defendant and you have somebody else who's a plaintiff, they are not going to do that. What they are going to do is they are going to come after you for their legal fees. That is like, I've never, ever heard of anybody trying to do such a thing. That is like I, like I already explained, there's already a legal mechanism in place for pursuing getting a refund for your legal fees if you are a defendant in a stupid, dumb lawsuit. And obviously, any lawsuit that would be brought against Parler for anything that you say on your site would be a stupid, dumb lawsuit because Section 230. And let me explain that because I can already hear people say, well, due to Section 230, this isn't going to come into play. Yes, it does. Section 230 says that no platform can be held liable for content that a third party publishes on it. It does not say that there can't be any lawsuits brought into a court to try to test that. And even if you know you're going to lose, like Parler knows Section 230 protects it within the United States, but there are still costs and time associated with having to fight this case because it exists. Somebody filed a lawsuit against you. You have to respond. You have to pay lawyers. You have to pay court fees. You have to go to court. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do whatever. That, wow. Um, so not only can you not say whatever the hell you want on Parler, I would suggest being extremely careful what you say on Parler. Because if there is a situation where somebody gets all out of pocket and decides they want to try to sue Parler because of something you said, they, they you're on the hook. Per the TOS, that's going to be on you. They're going to send you a bill. Yeah, I I would I would watch what the fuck I say on Parler. And if you think this is some kind of stupid, overblown situation that will never in a million years happen. Allow me to introduce you to one Devin Nunez, who for the past year has been attempting to sue Twitter and various users on Twitter for things that were said about him on Twitter, including a parody account pretending to be his cow. Like, absorb that in your brain for a second. A a sitting senator has done this multiple times. And Twitter actually, despite Section 230 existing, Twitter had to spend a whole year in court fighting this case that obviously probably should have been thrown out in the first five minutes, but that's not how things work. So yes, there are time and costs associated 
with fighting stupid frivolous lawsuits. And so Parler kicking that back onto users is the one that really got kind of the most attention when people first started digging into the TOS, but it's kind of faded away due to the the kind of restrictions on content and to my mind, restrictions on content, whatever. It's it's funny to dunk on them for putting themselves out there as a platform that allows free speech, but then having content restrictions. This is way more serious. This could get somebody really, really fucked up. I mean, you're talking, this is something that could cost somebody tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, fighting lawsuits ain't cheap. Lawyers ain't cheap. Like, this is so insanely egregious and draconian that, I mean, I have never posted on Parler. I'm never going to make it past the, the lewd language barrier there, but yeah, I wouldn't. I would not. I would highly suggest not doing that because you don't know. People are, are stupid and crazy and think that they can sue platforms for this, that, and the other. And here is Parler Point Blank saying, if we are put in that position, we are going to expect you to cover our legal costs. Mm -mm. Delete that shit. Delete it now. Pull all your shit down. Delete it before you, somebody shows up on your doorstep with a bill from Parler. And all that just pertains to lawsuits that are brought within the United States where we do, thank God, still have Section 230 on the books. If a lawsuit is brought against Parler in another country, say maybe either the UK or Australia, who have very different laws regarding platforms' liabilities for what is and is not posted on their on their platform, those countries' platforms can be held legally liable. So if a suit was brought in one of those countries and a settlement, or not a settlement, but a decision was made against Parler and there was a financial number attached to that saying that, okay, you, Parler, have to pay XYZ amount of money because you hosted this content on your platform. I would imagine Parler is going to turn around and bill you for it. Because, I mean, that's how I read that, is if you're going to be responsible for their legal fees, then any settlement that is made against them, you're going to be on the hook for that too. And that could be an astronomical sum of dollars. So this is just, this is wild. Like, that's that's ballsy. That is really fucking ballsy to put that in a TOS and think it's going to slide and that nobody's going to notice that your your platform here that is just supposed to be so freaking wonderful actually has one of the most draconian TOSs of any social media platform anywhere, at least within the United States. That's nuts. And that's just, and, and I, like I said, I emphasize this because it could end up burning you. I mean, you are going to be held financially responsible for the things that you are, that you say on Parler. If somebody decides to sue Parler, I, I, I cannot get past that one. And on the topic of lawsuits in the TOS, it specifically states that if you have a dispute with Parler, you, per the TOS that you agreed to, you cannot sue Parler. You have to pursue it through arbitration, which, uh, um, let me try to explain. And honestly, the arbitration thing has been controversial for a long time, not necessarily in social media TOSs, but you see it a lot in employment. If you're going to like a mid to large corporation, typically you do sign paperwork saying that if you have a dispute with the company, you don't go through the courts, you go through arbitration. And arbitration is a lot sketchier than going through the courts. It's typically weighted towards the company and not the individual. And as an individual, it's really hard to win a case in arbitration. So again, this is not in either Twitter or Facebook's TOS. Uh, neither one of those sites banned you from suing them, obviously, because people have sued them. That's, it's, it's sketchy in the way that, again, if you're going to say that you're this wonderful, open, transparent platform, but you would force people to go through arbitration versus going through the legal system, that doesn't really jibe. That's, that's a little... That's a little shady. 
Actually, it's a lot shady. This whole thing is shady as fuck. Let's be honest. It's fucking shady. But, yeah. So, people started figuring that out. And, obviously, people kind of started backing away from the platform due to that. And a point that I wanted to make on the topic of Section 230, because as I started thinking about this, um, my whole thing about what would happen if we got rid of Section 230 is that content would be extremely, extremely, extremely moderated. Because if a platform is going to be able to be held legally liable for what you say on it, they are going to moderate the hell out of that content. And there's going to be whole chunks of social media commentary that are just not going to be allowed because you're going to be held legally liable. This, what Parler did with flipping around legal responsibility, is kind of another example of what a post-230 world would look like, where that would be the bargain that you would have to make with a social media platform that, okay, we're going to have this platform and you're going to be allowed to say or do whatever it is you want, but if we get sued for it, you're on the hook for the money. Hey, yikes. Um, I would almost take the moderation over that. <laughs> I mean, none of those, I, I don't like either one of those options. I am a big fan of Section 230, as I've said many a times. It is the whole reason we are able to do what we are able to do on the internet. I do not understand why we have to keep explaining this to people over and over and over again. But this might serve as a good example to bring up that without Section 230, this would not be like some completely insane outlier. It could possibly be the norm for participating on social media platforms without moderation. So just another little dystopia to think about. For everybody who wants to get rid of or modify Section 230. But to bring this back to talking about Parler specifically, um, at this point, I don't really know what's going to happen to the platform. I don't know how many people are going to stay. I don't know if they're going to alter their TOS. This all remains to be seen. But here are my broader overall views of this whole situation. Content moderation is the right of every platform. And... Let me assure you, all platforms moderate. Let me say it one more time because people don't believe me. All platforms moderate. Like I said earlier, even Gab has kicked off a handful of people for going too far. Like they kicked off Paul Nealon for doxing somebody. Um, they kicked off Christopher Cantwell for I don't know what, probably for being Christopher Cantwell. And there's been a couple of other people. It's been, like I said, it's been a very small pool, but they have done it. Like, even for Gab, there are things that are a bridge too far. Every platform moderates, and it's their right. It's the whole point of Section 230, is to allow a platform to moderate the content that it hosts without being held legally liable for the content that they leave up. That's the point. That is the point of Section 230. I, I, um, at this point, I am not willing to accept that people who are misconstruing the point of Section 230 don't understand that or can't quite grasp it. At this point, I'm just assuming everybody that does it is doing so for their own purposes to try to wrestle some kind of control over the internet because we've explained this so many times. And it's such an easy passage of law to understand. It's less than 30 words, people. It's 26 words. They're real easy words to read, too. It's not hard. So this is why we need Section 230, so that platforms can moderate, and platforms do moderate. And to that point, I don't care about Parler moderating content as a platform. It's their platform. It's their business. It's their private digital property. They can allow on or not allow on whoever they want. If they want to put in their TOS that they can kick you off for anything at any time, that's their business. If they want a platform that says, you know what, we're not going to allow certain kinds of language, we're not going to allow certain kinds of images, fine, great, do it. I've got no problem with that. The only thing that I have a problem with, and this has been the, the criticism of Parler from people like myself, is that that's not what you held yourself out as. You held yourself out as this 
open, inclusive, moderation-free, censorship-free. I don't even think they use the word moderation. They use the word censorship, which that that annoys me too. Like if I, I'm so annoyed by people who take the word censorship and use it in place of moderation. Like you're doing it specifically to push a certain button in people's brains. Stop it. Anyway, it's their right to do that. I mean, it's their right if they want to say that we want to be a conservative-only platform. Go for it. Do it. But don't say that you're something that you're not. Because Parler, as it is currently constructed per per their TOS, is not a free speech platform. It's Like I said, it's a platform that I would very much watch what the hell I say on it. Because you don't know what somebody else is going to do. And like I said, there's there's dumbass people everywhere. There's always dumbass people trying to sue Twitter. Like Laura Loomer tried to sue Twitter. Devin Nunez is suing Twitter. Like everybody tries to sue Twitter. There's been plenty of conservatives who have been like, I'm going to sue Twitter because they kicked me off of their platform and now my feelings are hurt. Like that's their business. That's their right. And, it's, and like I said, it's the same way with Parler. And we're getting to the point in the discourse where I'm starting to see conservatives be like, you know what? Parlor banning certain kinds of content is good, actually. Which, again, fine, but don't say that you're this open free speech platform if you are going to moderate things that, I mean, would be allowed on Twitter. Like, obviously, you could tell people, fuck you on Twitter. You can have whatever kind of crazy username you want. I guess you could post pictures of shit in people's replies. <laughs> you could do literal shit posting. They're not going to stop you. Um, obviously, you can post porn on Twitter. I mean, it's it's funny just because it's so hypocritical from how they presented themselves. But the broader point is they can do that if they want. And the reason they can do that is because of Section 230, which conservatives like to turn into their own punching bag because you... The whole thing about conservatives being moderated or censored on Twitter, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. No. No. <laughs> there are conservatives with blue checks and way more followers than me. So I'm, I'm not buying it. Like, if Twitter really wanted to censor conservative thought on their platform, they could. They could go balls out and do it, but they don't. So it's just kind of always been an overblown thing to me, but... Even the larger point is that Twitter can have on their platform whoever they do and do not want. Now, of course, we're free to criticize that, and we're free to criticize their decisions the same way I can sit here and criticize Parler's decisions, but I still ultimately maintain that it's their right. It's their platform. It's their little private clubhouse. You can let in whoever you do or do not want to let in, and yeah, and and that's because of Section 230. So, yes. That is the parlor situation. Like I said, I don't I don't know if anything's going to change. I don't know if people are going to continue to be on parlor. I was always kind of of the opinion that this was going to be one of those things where, you know, every now and again it becomes popular to kind of like rage quit Twitter and kind of like do your little flounce off and then you're back two weeks later pretending like you didn't do what you did. Like like pretending like you didn't say you were gonna quit Twitter. So I don't think anybody who went to Parlor is actually going to quit Twitter because it's a drug. You all ain't leaving Twitter. You love Twitter. Stop lying. Anywho, I want to just go ahead and discuss that because I thought it was just interesting. It's just an interesting little thing that happened. And it touches on a lot of topics that I have discussed multiple times on the podcast. And so, like I said at the top, it's not like I could get away with not discussing this one. Because it touches on all of those other topics. So, yep, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So, as always, if you did make it this far, thank you for listening. And if you do like this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, and on my Patreon page. Take care, and until next time.